Hey everyone, it's Connor Beck from This Old Farm. And, oh, I'm sure you guys all remember that the video that I just posted up, or that just came up uh, Friday night there. Is it Friday or Thursday night, something like that? Um, about the, uh, about plow day. Well, uh, that field since last weekend has turned kind of grassy. So today, we've got behind me here, the Rosie 806 and our John Deere disc. Now you guys obviously did not see this during plow day, uh, but this is what we normally use when we aren't using the, for say, conventional tractors. So, um, we're gonna, we're gonna go up there and do a little bit of disking to get that down and then hopefully we're gonna pull out the planter which is in there and uh, we'll get some planting done. So we'll see you guys when we're up at the top of the hill. Now that we've got the, uh, the drag set up and ready to go, I'm going to go grab some earplugs out of the other 806 that you guys sat on during uh, the plow day video, and uh, then we'll get to work, because this tractor's kind of loud, so we'll see you guys when we all got, when I got uh, earplugs in my ears.
Okay, so we've now got uh, we're done disking. Um, we've got Rosie, or we've got the disc over back where he's supposed to be, and we've also got Rosie over here. Um, I'm having a bit of issues with trying to put it back where it is. It's uh, just it's something I'll have to deal with in a little bit. Um, so the next thing we will be doing is we will be working on getting um, we will be getting our four four nine five A John Deere planter out. It's a four row planter. Um, here it is. We got to get this out of here, and we have a little bit of a mess. We got to get out of the way first in order to get it out. So there it is. Um, I have to move some stuff out of it from the side of it so we don't pull that down with it. And then uh, some stuff on the back there. Obviously this, which will be fun, and. Uh, our little uh, Johnny Deer 316 here, so we'll get that uh, we'll get that moved, and uh, actually I'll probably what I plan on doing is maybe showing you guys getting this pulled out of here. So uh, we'll get some stuff moved out of the way, and then I'll turn you guys back on so you can watch us move the thing. Well, guys, I am sorry I forgot to click the camera on when we went to pull out the corn planter but uh, at this time we're still working on getting it out here um what you hear in the background is the lawnmower running um I have no idea what Dad just told me but um uh, so here it is we got it out and I'm gonna try sitting you guys somewhere so that uh... right guys so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys um, how to basically what you do to get these ready for planting so down here and I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see it but there's a little there's this little plate thing here <clears throat> that uh, is basically like your height adjuster I believe and uh, you have to get this there's a uh, where is it there's a little u-shaped bracket kind of here that this guy fits into so um, take this bolt off so it's the fourth one down, the fourth hole down because it's got holes, different holes. Set this on the tire. And then we'll bring it down. just like that. So then you take your plate here that we've got, we'll set it back onto the bar there. And remember our hole, which is the one, two, three, fourth one down. And then put our bolt and not get through there again. And then this way when you come to plant, when you set your when you sit the planter under the ground, instead of this packer wheel, which is what, which is, uh, I guess I should explain this. This is a packer wheel. This will, after your fertilizer comes through and your seed comes through, this is what puts the dirt back in, including with the rakes here. And so when this sits into the ground, instead of having this just kind of float on the ground, it will have pressure when it gets hit on that so that it does pack the seed. And then you just go through and do that for each one. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll kind of get that time lapse here and uh, 
so you guys can watch me speedy around doing this thing. So, we'll do a time lapse. So, now I'm going to pull you guys off here. Now another thing these Packer wheels will do is, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it also will put stuff down through here. There's little boxes you can pull bolt on to the end, which we actually do have. We just don't use them because what gets put down there we don't put down but um, you can put that down along with it and then that that does that so not too sure what those tubes exactly do but that we don't need to worry about because we don't use those now another thing I want to show you guys real quick here before we get stuff put on or put together is how this how it works to do uh do the corn so there's um how this works is when you when you lower the the planter into the ground this will go into gear which engages this which engages there's a little gearbox down here that engages that and then that gearbox runs all the way through here, over there, and it also, where else does it go? It's, I'm trying to think, oh, and then this here too, it runs that as well. Which then, this bar here will turn these, these plates and stuff, which turns a gear here, which is what turns... And I'll show you guys which turns this plate here which drops your seed into the ground so that spins around and as you can see quite well um, maybe quite well there there's a corn the corn drops down into there along with possibly the sorghum and that uh, then that makes it they just knock that around that goes through and it'll get knocked into the It'll drop through here, which then goes down to get buried. So there's uh, that's what you do, and then to hold them on, it, they've got these little these little um, whatever you want to call them hold downs. Hold downs, yeah. That uh, will hook onto the. There's a little. Where is it? Where's the little guy? There's the little guy. There's a little notch here that he gets put into, and that's how he gets put on. So there's one of the plates. And they've got, there's different size plates as well. So that's a B6-16. 16 holes for the corn. Sometimes there's 24. And then you can see that just gets it's just like kind of like a gear. Two little tabs drive it. Yeah, which is those two little tabs going there. And that's how your corn goes into the ground. Okay. Sometimes the seed, which is getting harder to find, is sized. So that's a B6, which will work, but B7, they also said. So. Yep. Yeah. So another thing we stick into it, which you can see the thing is black. I believe it's graphite, I want to say. Um, 
I don't have dad around to ask him real quick for him to say because he knows more than I do but um, it's a powder that you use you uh, after you dump your corn and you sprinkle some of that on and I'm not exactly sure either what that does so I'll get dad to also explain that for you um, so dad's bringing out right now which I'll show you guys here in a second you got a box of plates. That black powder is graphite, correct? Powdered graphite. And what exactly does that do? It's uh, like a lubricant. It lets everything slide. So the seed plates that are sliding on steel. They just create less friction. On the, so these are plastic and they're sliding on steel. Mm -hmm. It helps keep from cutting in like it's already doing. Wearing in. And then the seeds get underneath and it looks like our seed plate's been slipping because these all chewed up. You now these don't have any chew marks. But then compared to that one. All chewed up. So we're not going to use that one for sure. So we got to find a... A B7 or... B7 and uh, it's B9 there. Some are for flat seeds, some are for round seeds. The B2 it looks like. I think the square ones are for flats. These are for rounds. I like this B2. And we're going to use two different seeds, so we're going to have two different seed plates in here. The B.O. has a bigger hole. You can see the B.2 there. You can, is next to the red, kind of. He's, he'll take a bigger seed. This is almost what we should have for the sorghum in a way. Sorghum and then we're going to use that stuff that's sorted out. So we'll find two that that be. We'll plant two rows with the B7 and we can find a B7 the colors the B7 the B25 a little bit shorter than the smaller seed than the B B0 B2 Let's see if we can find a B7 in here There's a B-150, looks like he takes a pretty big one, he's got more, he's a 24 hole, he's got 24 going around, or these only have 16. A 24 too. The BO is a 24. Oh. It really takes a big seed. So there you guys can see how comparison how much longer this is compared to that one. You see they start out if you have the holes lined up right there already he's got a fatter so it lets less seed out. Yep. So you put less seed in the ground. So if you want to put a lot of seed in, you put a 24. 24, because it'll shovel it out faster. Which we might do. Since it's just silage corn. But then the corn fights for the sun. So it's not a trade-off. There's a B9. I haven't seen a B7 yet. They're selling these for like $5 a piece on the internet. See, that's got a flat, real short square. Where these are rounded more for probably a round seed. The 
drop in the hole. There's another B6, and he don't look like he's all chewed up. So if we needed a replacement for that one. Right. Let's try and find a. I wonder what the B7 looks like. Though. There's some B6s. So 150 by 24. We got we had a couple of them right there, I think. Yes, there's four of them right there. If we wanted to run them with that, we might put that in that other. I like these big holes though. Then you try to match it up to your seed. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of different varieties of plates that you can stick in. Okay. See how they fit in there. He's plenty big. The hole is. We're going to try and drop sorghum in with it. There'd be room for a seed of sorghum in there too. That might be too big. I don't know. It's a old. Let's see what this one looks like. B1. See, that's no good a seed there because he's broke off. Probably won't germinate. That looks like he fits just about perfect. So they would drop in. Just about perfect. And you get one seed at a time dropping in. Save it, we're using B1, it looks like. Another B1, another B1. Get some extra. Still looking for that B7. That's what they recommended for the seeds on the other bag. B7 look like. Here's a B7 right there. I knew he's broke though. Those look like they're for square ones though. Flats. They're flats. Maybe we have to look at them and open up the bag. Bag. Open them up. So, I'll go get the bag and I'll turn you guys back on uh, when we uh, when we're done here. I'm probably also gonna put you guys on the tripod so I'm not grabbing onto the magnet because that's what I've been using you guys on for quite a while. So, we will we'll grab the bag, we'll grab a tripod, and uh, we'll talk to you guys when we're ready again. So, what we are going to do now is, and this one looks like it's already or not, um, for the fertilizer here, in the fertilizer boxes there's these augers, which brings the, the fertilizer into either that one or that one. Those, either of those tubes which then send it down those tubes and into the ground and uh they gotta be hooked up and I'm not exactly sure how which probably isn't a very good thing but um how do these get hooked up? Yeah, both are both through there. Is it laying in there? Um, 
together. Let's see. So, let's see a paintbrush that we use to oil the sides up to try and prevent it from rusting, but, um, Hmm. Interesting. Is there no bolts? I don't think that's the bolt we want to use. I don't see them. I don't think you guys do either. See? So there you guys can see the uh, how they go in. Or how the seed drop. Or seed. Fertilizer gets trapped down. That wouldn't be it. Well, we'll get this mystery of. Wait a minute. There it is right there. And we'll set this here. Here they are right there and there. So, we'll get this burn. So. Okay, so now that we've got you guys settled, um, we're going to try and get this nut and bolt apart, and then we'll stick it through here. So, let's do something like that, and then I'll turn it here again, so that I can stick it together like it's supposed to be. Back to taking it down the rest of the way. And I'm gonna spin you guys around maybe. Wait. So I don't think I'm gonna see. This one put back together, so the uh, the auger is already in through here. So all I gotta do is get this dumb thing apart, which isn't gonna come. So I'm gonna get this apart. So I've got the bolt apart now, and what we'll do here. I set my crescent wrenches over the way. Is we will find the hole. Needs to go into. And uh, I'll get it together. Why can't I find my hole? It's not where it is. It might be where it is. So I want to see is that going to be so we got both, both of them hooked up now. There's that one. And then we'll move over to the other side and get the other one. Let's 
try and get this set over in there. His dad's little Chris right here. Alright guys, so as you can see, we've got the corn planter here. I'm going to tilt you guys down a little bit more. And uh, we're at the top of the hill. We are ready to go. Let's see. So we're looking alright. So here we go. I got to watch to make sure that we get C coming out. So I'm going to try doing that. Uh oh what did we break oh I forgot to engage I think the problem is
sorghum's coming out the side, see it? No. Somehow he's opened up on the one side. Just trying to see if we're getting corn coming out though. Mm -hmm. oh, there's a free nail, huh? <laughs> Pretty bent up though. Lower one would be, or the smaller one's faster. Yeah, that's right. We're going to the smaller one. Mm. You want a bigger one driving it? Yeah. I'm just gonna tell you guys now it's probably gonna be a little bit shaky but I gotta try and watch the seeds so I might not always be focused on you guys either so sorry if this doesn't turn out to be the greatest but I'm just trying to get some stuff for you here so enjoy
take over there. Seed there. And there's some seeds there. So. dumb designs. Yet another dumb design by John Deere. Pharma Fanatic would definitely agree with me on that one. Doesn't stop bugging. My priority is fertilizer thing. I might have to hop onto the side right along. Just sitting you guys up here.
Well, there we go. Thirty, probably more like an hour of planting, and there we go. We got birds eating it now. So now this should start growing. Dad's plan is for that one over there to uh, to get a hay cutting out of it, and then then uh, what am I thinking of here? Then plow it up and stuff. But uh, it's a dirty, dirty, dirty dog. So. Here we go. Rosie did a good job on it. Well, what do you think? A frost. And that's it. You can drink it. Oh, I'll pick up our mess here. We did a did do a little bit of damage. Um, let's see, I'm trying to get you guys so you can see it. I uh, <laughs> broke the little the little guy here. He was holding this. This clamp together on the on the cylinder, so I, I believe so that it doesn't go down too far. But uh, we may do without it. So try and get you guys the gist of it here. Okay, it's kind of something like that. Shoved it down too far and it decided to go. A lovely head strap which is giving me issues. I don't know what's going on with it. But, uh, figure that out later. Oh, now it's working. Uh oh. Dumped thing. You guys have already heard enough cuss words for today. Uh, I suppose everybody can watch me take a drink of pop. Oh, we should put that in that road gear thing for the... For the height.
Stick. Hmm. What now? What do you want to do with this thing? Or are you good? Oh. Alright, I'll take Rosie down then. Rosie Posey. Okay. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna do a little bit of monkeying around here at the tractor real quick. I gotta do, um... I gotta put it, which I'll show you guys how to do this, in the so-called road gear. I'm a planter, excuse me. Um, oh, let me stick this stuff in here real quick. And then I'll hop down and I'll show you guys how this is done. So, um, there's this little pin doodad here. Oh. I'm attacking you guys now. I'm attacking you. No, yeah, we're not up far enough yet. Just wait. Something like that. And we're gonna do some circles. <laughs> Come up here. And we'll pull the lever. Some. And then we'll climb back out. And we'll pull the pin. Oh, it's plenty long. And then we'll grab our little pin here, stick it through, and we're ready to go down the road. Even though we aren't going to be driving down the road. So, if you guys want a how to on how to drive Rosie, or any 06 series, I do believe, from on onward from onward from this series and I don't know how far we got your clutch over here which is pretty much normal to any tractor which my foot is on um, and then you basically have there's it says right on your neutral then there's your low gear and your high gears. Your high, which is what I've got it set to right now. And then you've got your reverse. And then you've got one, two, three, four. So you've got you've got eight reverse and I believe it's like it's 16 forward. Now the reason I say eight reverse and 16 forward, even though there's only four here, because you've got your high and low TA there. So Rosie's ready to go. She's sick of dinking around. So, I'll take off here. Now, this is the Hineker cap. Uh, this is not the ice cream box. So, this is the, uh, the lovely little heater fan stuff to do that. What not. It is a little bit of a nicer tractor than the other one. Unfortunately, the fuel gauge stopped working about last winter, so it's a nice little tractor. Oh, excuse me. Uh, we got that window down there open because we got the wrong battery in it. This tractor has the generator in it. Surprisingly, yes, it does have the generator in it. It has not been switched to an alternator. It never was an alternator. So we'll get that. We, we gotta get new batteries for it. The other ones were John, the John Deere battery that was in it. Curse it. Curse the other good one. And so that's a lot of money there we gotta put into it. And then, and then I told Dad, I said we just need to switch it to an alternator because obviously the generator hasn't done a good enough job. So, we will s hopefully switch the generator into an alternator. And then, put new batteries in it. The other
other 806 needs new batteries too because those things are like ancient. Tractors here. Sorry if you guys are bored. I know this isn't. I'm not doing the greatest job, but I'm trying to get you guys something. So that looks like that's right there. So here's our seeds. We got sorghum there. That's corn. Um, up up here. Maybe I'll just quick sit you guys up on the fertilizer box. Tilt it down and you guys can watch and hopefully not vibrate off. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Enjoy.
Alright, scare ya? Maybe. Whoa. Anyways. Okay, fine, don't close. We got that all taken care of. No, we'll take up a freaking break. in here because I don't care for bees. Oopies. Oh. Yeah, this window's somehow got itself goofed up. Bang. So, there, you guys have had almost <laughs> probably like 10 or 20 minutes of boredom. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> Uh, I'm just joking. So we'll get the battery on cable on hook just because I have bad feelings about it. Mr. H still has a bad tire. He still keeps going flat. Turns out it's just the inner tube. Super M, still not the new. Still haven't heard anything from the machine shop. Because they don't seem to figure out what a phone is. Or can't seem to figure out what a phone is. So, um, still haven't heard anything from them yet. And yeah, everything else is pretty much nice and not a whole lot that has been going on. I mean, I guess, other than for chores, cause there's not really anything, any time to do anything during the week. So, um,. Oh, you know what I'm gonna integrate into this video is somebody, and I'm gonna find out their name this time because I want to make sure that they get their proper acknowledgement. So, somebody by the name of Shane Powers asked me how we made the buddy seat on the M diesel and the Super M has one as well. How we made the buddy seat for the M diesel? Well, <clears throat> when you come to your tractor, there are these four bolt holes. Those are, I have no idea what they're for, they're practically useless to us, I think. So, what Dad decided to do is he decided to take some anything that we had laying around, I think on the Super M at square, but here it's round. He took a bar and he put an angle at it because our uh, 
our what you call it, our bandsaw that we have that's got the uh, the the gravity fed arm that slowly comes down as it cuts through. Um, we put that in an angle, cut some stock, and then he welded it to here. And then he's got basically what he did here is he welded it. He he took some um, I don't know what you would want to call it some stuff with the channel there, the L-shaped, I'm going to call it L-bar, because I don't know what else to call it, you guys help me out there, um, but he basically took the, the L-bar and cut different sections of it, welded it together, and then he took this piece here, welded that, put that together, and then how we did the seat, well, I think what we did... Because I remember helping them, is we took a piece of foam that we had laying around. We put, you guys might be able to see, I gotta turn my screen back on. Yeah, you guys can see there, there's a board in there to get your surface. And then we just found some leather we had laying around and nailed it to, on there. And then that made the seat. And Dad just took some bars here and bent them together same same exact thing for the cushion and then just screwed it in there um, but the only thing I suggest if you do build one of these is make sure that you are planning for future use because right now I am like edge to edge and my legs go like way out there so um yeah you're pretty much useless for your brakes unless you stick your foot you know do some fancy thing like that but if you can get it maybe taller than the taller than the tire here and kind of put the chair above the tire i would suggest maybe or just something to get further and then something dad just added to this one is he added the little footrest which I can't really use anymore so that's how he did that chain and anybody else that wants to know how we did it um it seems to I mean it works other than for that it's small now so that's how we did that and there's nothing really else going on haven't done anything to the plow yet um Somebody did also suggest, and I'm going to try and find their name as well. Uh, let's see here. Gary Barrett. He suggested that I paint the plows. Dad also suggested that, so I'm going to paint them. I will eventually be painting them, but first I want to, um, as I explained in the plow, David, to get those welds. There's a weld there, and there's welds slanted there and there's stuff there um i want to i want to smooth that all off because that kind of prevents it from plowing and uh we got our issues pretty much solved over here as you guys you guys might remember we were having issues with this bar well now that it doesn't you pull it oh my gosh it was fixed but it doesn't seem to be anymore. So, I might just have to leave that bar like that. I don't know. But, it was working good. No, it doesn't seem to be working good anymore. I don't know if this, maybe that makes it worse. I don't know. One thing I do know is this cord is too short to... Yeah, it works just fine. I don't know. Something's goofed up with it, but we aren't going to worry about that because I think it'll work. So, we might just have to keep that flipped over. I don't know. Um, but we did, I did end up actually breaking that. The, there's supposed to be like a, a U-shape. I broke it off. It was, it was cracked and already coming apart and I finished it off trying to hook this thing in there, I think it was. So... 
Yeah, that's unfortunate, but I drilled a new hole in it, and we're all good again. So, oh, I guess that's about all that's new. So, uh, you guys got a nice long video again. Sorry, excuse me for that. And, uh, yeah, well, uh, I guess we'll talk to you probably next weekend because today's Sunday I think I want to say it's Sunday it's Sunday so we'll talk to y'all talk to you all next weekend when I get more stuff um, I know I said the tire changing video would be next sorry for keep blabbling I know I said the tire changing 101 will be next that'll be next after this one um, as long as I get this one going, it took me a while to get Plow David up because I was quite busy last week for some reason, so, we're kind of winding down on school, so, oh, I guess that's it, so I'll stop blabbling, you guys are sick and tired of hearing me, so, thanks again for watching, please, please remember to comment, rate, share, subscribe for more, because there's always plenty more to come on the farm. And we'll see you all next time. Because I'm tired.